body piercing industry as a whole is heavily, heavily invested in looking after the client. That's their main priority. The person who sits in the bedroom or in the kitchen firing holes in people is after one thing and one thing only, and that's money. You've got two options, haven't you? People who are getting pierced, they want a professional. Act like one. What I'm going to be taking you through now is the studio and the basic setup of it. Basic says you need to push towards having a cool, calm environment. If you've got thrash colour music on, it's going to get you nowhere. The client's going to be coming in already hyped up. By the time you get them on the couch, they're just going to sit there and faint straight away before you've even touched them. Calm them down. Have a calm, cool environment. Clinical as well because that's the actual impression and that's the actual standard you need to be striving for. Just to give you a nice guideline around the studio, you're going to be looking at your bench, your bench rolls. You've got gloves both sides because at some stage you might actually be working on the other side of the bed. You've got all your jewellery you need at hand, all your forceps at hand, all your needles already pre-packed, your sharp spots and your station and basically anaesthetics if you actually choose to actually use these products. The actual station itself should actually carry every single product you want to carry that piercing out. What we're also going to be teaching you today is a technique we've refined for actually stopping piercings bleeding. How it basically works is like this. When everyone usually does a piercing, the piercing and the jewellery are exactly the same calibre and size, or sometimes people will actually pierce a lot bigger than the jewellery that's necessary to be putting in. Obviously giving your body plenty enough time, time to let blood come steaming out of it. What we do is actually pierce it, the blade is actually smaller than the actual jewellery we stick in, and the process of putting the jewellery in the cannula is what stretches it. It all sounds very complicated, I know, but it breaks down like this. If you're going to actually do a 1.6mm barred piercing, you're actually going to use a 1.7mm needle. The actual blade in the needle is 1.5mm. When you actually put the jewellery in, slightly stretching the cannula to the size, it'll actually take it up to the size of one7 thus sealing the piercing by 0.2mm. It sounds very complicated, but it's a technique that works, we've refined, and it is exceedingly good as a job. You will find that hardly anybody will bleed. Right, I'm going to show you this technique a bit more close up and a bit more refined. Taking a 1.7mm needle and a 1.6 piece of jewellery, when the piercing is actually carried out, you actually reintroduce the needle slightly withhold it back onto itself so that that's there acting as a, acting as a strengthener for the actual process. Put the piece of jewellery in the end. As you can see it's slightly, very smallly enlarged the area. Withdraw the needle, discard it, run it through and you'll find that it will actually seal the piercing. What we're now going to do is do two eyebrow piercings and actually demonstrate this for you. As you can see here we've got two piercings, two eyebrows exactly the same piercings. I've got over here, I've an orange, over here I've got a grey. First thing we'll do is we'll stick the orange piercing in. As you can see we're already in a situation where we need to control bleeding straight away. Actually hold that and just jumping in front of the camera if you could just take the patch off for me there you go, it doesn't take much to actually work out the difference in the actual style and the techniques and how it actually works and benefits the client as well as your studio. Right, there you go, the actual technique is exceedingly well proven just with that example that we did. There are a couple of actual differences in certain piercings where you can and can't use this. The only one we've ever found is navel piercings. There is a great reduction in actual bleeding in regard to this piercing anyhow so personally I would recommend an orange. Your client will dance all over the bed and the concept of trying to do refined, stylized work with someone who's trying the best to actually get out the door while still getting pierced is probably not the best way to actually go forward. 
Also, the tongue piercing. It's not a problem with using that technique with tongue piercings. The only thing you do need to remember is, because it actually it's that tight and it tightens the piercings up, you do need to tell the client that if they actually abuse the piercing over the next couple of days, excessive talking, drug abuse, etc, etc, which you shouldn't be doing any help with clients or clients, then what will actually happen is the tongue will go black and blue. No, you haven't hit anything major, it's just the fact that the muscle cannot go through its normal activities. Right, what we have here is your clients, we're just going to run through some of the basic piercings that are available on the market. There are some other ones, but this particular client carries a fair arraignment of them. You've got the eyebrows and rings, eyebrows and bars, both sides of a nose pierced. You've got your librettes at the bottom. You've also got some extreme light piercing at the top. On the side here, you've got an industrial, inner conch, date at the back there, trigus, tunnels, and various other rings. On the side here, you've got a lot of scaffolding work, trigus, rings, and tunnels again. Internally, we've got a random assortment of tongue piercings as well. Right, next we're going to work on the tongue piercing. One of the main serious warnings that needs to be given about tongue piercing is always check a client's vein structure. If you don't actually check the vein structure and you actually pierce through something like this, we're talking about some serious, super funky complications going on. The best thing to do, check it. If you're not 100% safe, don't chase the book just for me. Back the piercing off, tell the client it can't actually be done. Right, the tongue itself is separated into two individual muscles held together in the middle by what's called a septum frame. This is actually where the piercing is going to be placed. We're not actually beginning causing any damage to the actual muscles itself. If you do actually catch them, you will actually give the client a lisp. One of the first things you want to do is prepare yourself up, check the piercing can actually be performed, and then we'll go forward with some marking. And just relax your tongue. Just clamping the tongue up nice and easy. Have a look on the top and have a look on the bottom. This particular client has actually got a vein that runs slightly up the side there, but I've got a nice, very positive space up there to actually run the piercing through, so that's where we'll be carrying it out. Take the clamps off and then prepare to mark. You get the client to stick his tongue back out again, wipe the area down. You're going to get a basis of where the septum frenum is, the natural crease in the middle of the tongue. If you can go like that. If you get the client to split his tongue like that, you can see positive in the middle that it is actually spot on. And there you go, we can prepare it up and start getting the piercing done. Right, the tongue piercing is nice and easy. We can just approach the client's tongue. That's it, nice and positive. Make sure it's spot on in the middle. Checking your top mark, approach from the bottom. You can see positively where the set in front of is. Put the needle on, check your mark, run the needle through. Just draw the needle. Remove the clamps. Approach your piercing again with the actual bar that's going to be put in. And stick your tongue back out. Discard the needle, if you can keep your tongue back out for me. Keeping pressure on the bottom of the tongue, just run the jewelry straight through nice and positively. Keep it over the top, discard the cannula. Make sure the client does keep his tongue out all the way through this process. Spit and shiny balls very slippery little suckers but you will be able to tame them. Screw the bottom ball on, hold the top, just push the bar up on itself slightly. There you have a tongue piece and if you want put your tongue back in. What you want to do, I fitted you with a 22 mil bar. The reasoning for this is so you've got a nice amount of space because your actual tongue is going to actually swell. Basically respect the fact you've got a tongue piercing, don't abuse it with this actual process of actually the needle retention and stuff like this, you will actually find if you abuse a piercing over the next couple of days, you are going to get some black and blue markings. Yeah? Mm -hmm. 
every single day, clean it down with mouthwash. So you come back in a week's time and we'll fit you with a 16mm bar. That'll be appropriate for your piercing and all.